Nasovic ready to tip it up. Lipscomb the five seed, Stetson the four. Ace on quarterfinals underway here in the land. And the home hatters have the opening possession there in white. Lipscomb in black. Same uniforms they wore Friday night in regular season finale. Swenson lobs to Josh Smith, and right away, Greg, the impact of Stefan Swenson felt. Beautiful design play. Friday, both teams win this tight man-to-man, -man, so let's see if we can get some backdoor action. Both teams thinking the same thing. Darian Boyd draws the foul. Kind of a chance to tie it up at the free throw line. There's the starting lineup for the Bison. Same five they rolled out Friday. Wesley Panzo picks up the personal foul for Stetson. Boy picking up where he left off on Friday, having an outstanding game. Another one of those lefties, Evan, in the A-Sun. It's a proliferation of them, it, it appears. You have Swenson for the Hatters, and now you have Boyd. Boyd knocks down the pair, 78% at the line this year. Hatter starting five, back to its normal service with Swenson back in there. Swenson trapped. McGinnis nearly with the steal, but he stepped out. And this is what you want to see with a lot of basketball clubs in the A-Sun. A hard hedge, which turned into a double team. So Swenson was just feeling it out, trying to make somebody break and, and get open. How can the Hatters work around that hard hedge? Well, that hedge, you, you either have to skip pass or you have to get rid of it before the double team comes. Blackman and Swenson, the two all-conference players for the Hatters. Blackman shot clock winding down. Blackman's got to get it up. Missed it from the mid-range. McGinnis the rebound. A little off balance there, but still able to get the shot up. But not make it. They throw it down to Ignacevic. Quick double. Right away, the Hatters said, we're not going to let you get off to a hot start. Gets into his mid-range shot. Missed it a little strong. So the quick pass there from Asajula, their center, he's the team's leading assist man this season. And has been for a few years now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, he's kind of a uh, give or take, you know. He, he leads them in assists, leads them in turnovers as well, but very good passer. Shot clock winding down again. Luke Brown with just three to shoot gets tied up by Asajula. It's going the other way. And because of Asagula with that hard hedge turns into a double team, remember he's 6'10". And now that you have a smaller opponent unable to see and make that pass, and he lost the handle of it, great defense there by the Bisons. Will Pruitt, junior from Mount Juliet, Tennessee, runs the show. Dumps it to Asagula. Love the jump hook. Here he goes, scores it. Now, well, has been badly limited by that right knee that he's needed multiple surgeries on. He's only averaging seven points a game this season. He's had to limit his minutes, but still so valuable for them where they can get him on the floor. He was first-team all-conference each of the last three years for Lipscomb. Uh, just an all-around performer. So the Hatters, let's see if they can know where to make that second pass out of that double. Weza Panzo no good with his first attempt. Rebound tipped out to Pruitt. Now Agnasovic lays it in. And this is a team that runs very well, and they run a control fast break, even when they're unable to get the numbers. First two for Agnasovic. Smith going up against him. Smith bullies yeah. his way inside. He's got all four for the Hatters. So that time, Swenson read the double team correctly. A double team comes. He just went straight ahead with the guy that rolled to the bucket. Sancho to the corner for McGinnis. In and out. And then Blackman is fouled by Sancho going the other way. Got away with one hand in the cookie jar there. Trying to come up with a steal and, and of course Blackman 
giving you the antics, Steve. <laughs> well, he got to make sure the referee saw it, right? Of course, but of course. Foul trouble is something that Asajula traditionally it's had issues with. Blackman with a great cut, but he dropped the pass. Not concentrating. It was a good pass, a good look by Swenson. And Blackman sometimes lackadaisical if, if there is a knock against him. Such a talented performer. But More often than not, he was on in the conference this year. 17 and a half a game, deservedly winning the Newcomer of the Year award. Here's the shot to the lot of bodies in there. He finishes. Yeah, he's just too big a guy inside, and, and he's catching the basketball so deep. And he's such a good passer if you want to double team him. So. Panzo works his way inside, badly misses Pruitt the board. Will Pruitt looking to get Lipscomb in motion. Boyd driving baseline, shakes off Swenson. Misses the fadeaway jumper. He got Swenson on the deck, but couldn't finish the job. And that's a good no call by the officials. There was no charge in there, even though he kind of wore it off just a bit. But his momentum is the one that pushed Swenson back. Look, Brown hits along too. He's been big over the last few games. 18 points a game in those final three, two of which Swenson missed. And Friday, this time, in this first half, he was sweating bullets because he was running the team, trying to get open. Agnosovic deep underneath the basket, turns around with the floater. Unorthodox, but with conventional results. It's an absolute dynamo of a big man over 18 a game in the league this year Smith no room against Asajula a lot of standing around by the headers shot clock winding down again Swenson's gonna have to take it himself just a little bit short with the layup Pruitt looking for a teammate he's got McGinnis Swenson there to close out Boyd, right wing three. That's yeah. good. And that's credit Asajula for looking over the floor and finding it. Finding that open person. Those guys, the Bisons, they run to their spots. Lipscomb with an early seven-point cushion. Smith with the response. No good from the top of the key. And Agnosovic beats Blackman to the rebound. Here they go again. Asajula backing down Smith. No double. The hook is well short. Smith grabs the rebound. Yeah, actually got away with a little travel there, a little baby steps the officials didn't call. Here's lefty on lefty. In goes Swenson, forces it through. And that's something the Hatters did not have the last couple of games, his ability to get inside the paint and take the ball to the basket. He shoots over 50% inside the arc. Average 12 points a game in the league. He's not just a passer. It's Panzo, but he gets called for his second foul. That's a point lead. Where it just shows you basketball is basketball. No matter what level, if you can coach, you know, you can coach on any level. We all know the key to very good coaching is having better players than the next guy, but you got to put them in the right spots and give them the right system. Agnosovic over Smith, no good. Sam Peek, who checked in during the break, gets the rebound. The grad transfer out of Wesleyan, a D3 All-American last year. Had a huge career night, Friday night, against yeah. the Bison. Luke Brown, a long three, just missed it. Hatters 0 for 3, and they rely on that an awful lot. 39% from three, over 10 a game. Matt Schneer passes one up. Schneer, turnaround jumper. That's in and out. It looks like those new basketballs that, that they're playing with both teams. There's oh. Blackman. Bang out. All by himself, his first two. Let's see if that gets him going. Turn the corner. A lot of people think he's going to shoot the basketball, but he can't put it on the floor. Agnosovic. He had a tough year shooting the three. He has not had a tough time shooting the three in this building. Now, four out of five between Friday and tonight. Already got seven points. And if Stetson can't slow him down, it's academic. 
Again, unorthodox type player, but can do multiple things for you. Brown again from NBA range, no good. Peek running in for the rebound, but he won't get there. It's Pruitt. Runs into Blackman. Blackman took it away. They call a blocking foul against Blackman. The official blew his whistle. Everybody looked. And then he looked and says, well, I, best, I, I better call something. And, and he basically just loses the basketball. If anything, it was just a turnover. That's two tough breaks for the Hatters. Should note, by the way, that Wes Panzo only has one foul. During the break, they gave it to Stefan Swenson. So that's a break for Stetson, but Blackman picks up his first. Pruitt short with the layup, going for the rebound. Ball's on the ground, and Peek is there. He was making hustle play after hustle play on Friday night. That's a big rebound there for Stetson. A lot of hand checking going on. The Blackman's three have is to, blocked. Yeah, the fish have to clean it up just a bit. Quincy Clark, hands for Ignacevic, puts it in. Nine for Ignacevic, and it's an eight-point lead for Lipscomb. Games like this, you have to keep it under control. Maybe a timeout here for Coach Jones and the Hatters if they don't score here. Swenson not in the game right now. Lipscomb is playing. They're playing their basketball. This is Lipscomb basketball. Blackman hits a huge three from the wing. Yeah, first three of the game for the Hatters. They depend on that an awful lot. One, the best three-point shooting team in the A-Sun. They are 10th in the country in three-point percentage, ninth in threes made per game. Here goes Quincy Clark, and he is fouled. Quincy Clark had a career. Top 25 in the country in field goal percentage. Second in the A-Sun in scoring. Went over 1,000 points this year. I mean, this he's had a stellar season. Quincy Clark had a stellar game the other night. Career high 17 in the Lipscomb win over Stetson on Friday. He's shooting two free throws here. Six foot two sophomore from Westerville, Ohio. One out of two at the line. The rebound bounces to Schneer. And you have the Bisons getting all the 50-50 balls so far. As Trey Benham just checked in. Sharpshooter off the bench, as is McGinnis. Benham down low to Asagula. Knocked away by Jawara and Clark with a shot clock violation. And that's good defense by the Hatters. And it was happened on that play because of Jawara coming over and double teaming Asajula as the shot clock went down. Jawara checked in during the break. He's there with Swenson, Peak, Brown, and Alec Oglesby. Here's Brown. Wild shot counted and a foul. And nice stop and go by Luke Brown. Receiving the basketball on the curl, feeling his opponent. And when he felt the opponent on his backside, he stopped to stop his opponent. Hesitation dribble and the presence of mind to take the blow and he's giving you the peace sign in the cameras. Luke Brown. Brown made national headlines in his debut for Stetson when he scored 27 in Tallahassee as they beat Florida State. Now, Florida State ended up losing 20 games, but still that's a power that, five team that you knocked right. off on the road in your first game. And if you're, you're beating any of those power five teams, you say, hey, it's not my fault you're having a down year. Schneer for three. Big response from Lipscomb. And that Max was Schneer, the, dra the grad transfer from Emory. And that was created by Clark. Everybody trying to keep him out of the paint. He got inside the paint, threw it back outside. Matters back to work down six. Jawara against Asajula. Loses his footing. Finds a cutting Sam Peak who's well short with his floater. Yeah. Use the left hand right there. Asajula will challenge Jawara this time. Down low, Schneer sticks it in. You can't get caught looking. Everybody's looking at Asajula, and Schneer snuck right in, and he delivered a, on the money pass. 
Let's come pick it right where they left off on Friday. They are cool and in control. Peek to the corner, Brown. Swenson, head fake, drives, pulls up, in and out. Jawara punches the rebound away, but he's the last to touch it. Jalen Blackman will check back in for Luke Brown. But the Hatters are getting inside the paint, something they didn't do a lot of on Friday. They just cannot convert. Credit the defense of the Bison. And they have not made Stetson Hatters, that is, they have not made the Bison uncomfortable in anything that they've run. Their offense. Nasovic way off with that three. I thought he might have rushed it a little bit. <laughs> uh, somewhat, just a bit. As a Panso checking back in for the Hatters. Panzo, the nation's leading three-point shooter at almost 49%, but he did not make a single one Friday night. Didn't appear to have the usual confidence. Well, you know, credit to Bison. They ran him off of the three-point line, made him put it on the floor. Blackman gets to the line on McGinnis, his second foul. Yeah, McGinnis. What transfers over offensively sometimes transfers over defensively. He's struggling offensively, defensively, a lot of hand. An official saw it, just one push there with the left arm. Blackman, the A-Sun's number one free throw shooter, 91%. He's been remarkably consistent in A-Sun play. And that those numbers have gone up in a sun play almost 18 points a game 15 points overall a game, but in a sun play Now here's a little one two two Hatters like Pressure. to do this off of made free throws from time to time Just to keep the other team honest and we didn't see any of that and you know after the game uh, Friday, I, I suspected that you will see a little more of this you have to change it up because the Bison are just getting what they want offensively. Clark going to the basket. Baseline jumper. No good. Agnosovic flies through four hatters but travels. He had a lot of white shirts around him. Couldn't quite gather himself. The officials called traveling. Very well could have been a foul. You take a look at it here. He grabs control of the ball. Yes, he moved that pivot foot. Correct call. Hatters back on the attack. Blackman in on boy. Gets it to go. A lot of contact. Officials are letting them play. Blackman's got nine. Quick response from Benham. No good. Hatters starting to have a little momentum for the first time tonight. Benham and McGinnis, they had goose eggs Friday. Swenson had to keep that dribbling and he managed to pull it off. A little Harlem glow there. dad. <laughs> May have gotten away with a little carry there. Kind of picked it up. Kept it bouncing. Shot clock winding down. Blackman's got a pull up from three. Not even close. Yeah. Under and duress, had to shoot it. Take us to another timeout on the floor. That's what we call points in the paint. They had 22 to 8 in the first half. The Bison had the advantage in the Hatters, and as you said, finished 54-32. Evan Weston, Greg Turner, bringing you the A-Sun quarterfinal. Four-seed Stetson, five-seed Lipscomb. Both regular season games between these two teams went to overtime. The road team won both. Threw it for three for Lipscomb. He was red hot the other night. He's got his first three this evening. Good standing shooter. Good. And you know when we talk about points in the paint, it's not necessarily big guys. It's little guards getting inside the paint and scoring. Smith is hooked as he caught that ball. And that foul on Boyd probably bails out the Bison. It would have been an easy two for Josh if they let him continue to the basket. Yeah, Boyd got caught on the switch here. And just <laughs> when you when you look inside and you don't see the other. Your de you know, your defense, that means you got a good post up. You got to throw the ball in there. They've got Agnosovic out on the perimeter guarding Panzo. 
goes Oglesby. Looking for room against Boyd. Back to Swenson with a shot clock winding down. Swenson pulls back for three. A little bit strong. Hatters are not shooting it well tonight. One for seven from beyond the arc. Clark straight down the lane. He missed the shot. Josh Smith the rebound for Stetson. That's what Quincy Clark does for you. One-on-one -on -one player. He wants to get to the rack. And a career high. A season career high there for the Bison Friday. Hands up. For Swenson. Hatters taking their time again. Smith, turn around, Jay. That's no good. Yeah. You got to take your time. You had a smaller opponent on you. you rush that shot. Hatters have gone cold. Agnasevic inside. Little turning hook. He missed it. And if you had some old basketballs, that probably would have gone in. These new <laughs> basketballs, they have a little bounce to them. Agnasevic shoots 71% inside the three-point arc. Those hooks are automatic for him. Oglesby missed the three. Hatters can't buy a bucket right now. Boyd steps into one in transition, drills it. Donnie Jones needs timeout. Lipscomb's ahead by 10 with five minutes to go in the first. Good team like this that runs and they run to spots. They already have the fast break started. Amadou Jawara checks back in for Stetson as they try to figure something out on this end of the floor. It's their offense that's carried them all year. Swenson a little underneath with his offhand. And just saying, what can I do to get a foul? <laughs> and that was a circus shot. A lefty using his right hand. Now they've only called eight fouls in this game, and one of them was an inadvertent whistle where the referee had to make something up. <laughs> so it's been a physical lightly whistled contest so far threw it from the wing Swenson right in his face that's the defense they missed without him Boyd another one this one a little ambitious Jawara fans are getting tied up with each other yeah Boyd got away with some steps there the officials did not rare turnover from Swenson threw it blocked by Jawara and now the Hatters have a break Here's Brown taking on Asadula who runs him out. Blackman for three. It's good! And that's Hatter basketball, but credit Jawara with the big block. He did not give up. He has earned his way back into the rotation over the last month with plays like that. Jalen Blackman has 12 of Stetson's 25. Agnasevic counted and a foul. Quiets this crowd. The star player for the... It's tough to handle the basketball, score, play defense, find your teammates. People like a Russell Westbrook will make it look easy. Agnasovic missed the free throw. Yeah, and a very good free throw shooter. That was out of 127 attempts coming into this game, he made 109. <laughs> He's third in the conference in free throw shooting. Hatters down seven. Brown just pulls up over Asadula. Was perhaps a little misguided. Pruitt with the rebound. And Asadula, Asadula baited him into taking that shot. Now Agnasovic going against Peak. Pruitt. Gets the screen. Asadula dumps to Agnasovic. Hatters swarm him. They kick it around to Tommy Murr. Nice little dish to Agnasovic, but he missed short. And it may have been five seconds in the lane instead of three seconds. The Bison got away with that, with the ball movement. Oh, an offensive foul on Jawara. I gotta say, they let some hard stuff go and called some soft stuff tonight. <laughs> but here's a look at it. Yeah, that's really nothing. That's not much there. Didn't really impede the progress of of Boyd and Asajula basically moving to the basket. Well, that's six fouls for Stetson. Pruitt, step back, open three. Missed it, rebound peak. You're not going to get too many looks that wide open in this game. Hatters hanging around despite appearing outgunned in this first half. Ball loose on the deck. 
The arrow's pointing to the Hatters. We'll see what they call. And look at the hustle for both teams. Everybody giving up their bodies, diving, not just reaching, but diving for the basketball. It is a hell ball, so it'll stay with Stetson. And there's the errant pass there with Swenson trying to thread it through the needle. But dived on the floor to try to recover it, so gives the Hatters that extra possession. Having the possession, Arrow. Blackman, corner three. Got yeah. it. Very Courtney is good. Very not good. missing tonight. Very good out-of-bounds play. And you know I always say it, Evan, when you run a man-to-man, -man, you got to be able to play good man-to-man -man defense out-of-bounds. Pruitt looking for Schnare. Gets it under control. Now it's Boyd for Pruitt. Asajula and Jawara. The ball movement of the Bisons. Asajula spins off of Jawara to Schnare. It's blocked. <laughs> Schnare couldn't believe he didn't get a foul. More than Asajula didn't just shoot. Now Blackman. Ice cold. He's feeling it. Timeout, Lenny Acuff. When the Hatters need a bucket. This no, we don't use hyperbole on this broadcast. <laughs> Absolutely right, Evan. But crucial one and a half minutes. A very good timeout by Coach Acuff. Agnasevic coming back to the scorer's table. He's not in the game just yet. Boyd, loose dribble, but it falls for Murr. And Schneer wide open. Jawara falls all over him. And he really got away with a travel. He Second foul on Jawara, who's put in some big minutes here. But great pass by the Bison. Yep. He put the ba basketball down there. That's a very correct call. This would be a one and one for Schneer. And he's very fortunate he didn't get hurt on that play with the Jawara's a, a put together individual. 6'10, 250. Yes, yes. No fat on him anywhere. Schneer was an All American last year at the D3 level. 24 points a game. Grandview Prep. The pride of Grandview Prep. Only 67% at the line this year, but he makes the first. You talked about his great year on Friday at Emory. Scored 611 points in one season. <laughs> That's putting the ball in the basket, people. He's got Lipscomb back out by three. Here's the red-hot Jalen Blackman. Turns on Clark. Baseline J. That's way short. Rebound somehow finds its way to Boyd. Darian Boyd on the drive, stripped by Oglesby, but a foul! And the fans are letting the official know about that apparently late call. As we take a look at it here, and it's a correct call. He got hit on the back of the arm. And Boyd, it's a very good, 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 decent free throw shooter. 78 percent free throw shooter. He misses the second. Three out of four tonight. It's a four-point game. And things could have been a lot worse for the Hatters. Because this game could have gotten out of hand. And Blackman is lifted them back into things About 21 seconds between the shot clock and the game clock here is blackman fouled by clark lipscomb has a couple to give yep, was, but the hatters will get a fresh 20. i was wondering when a foul was going to be called on the dribble both teams using a lot of hands and the officials have let it go to this point Luke Brown holding as he gets the play call from Donnie Jones. Sam Peake driving high off the glass and good. And a lot of contact on that play as well. And the officials elected not to call. First two for Peake. Here goes Clark. End of the half. Puts it up. No good. Ripped away by Brown and the shot. No good as time expires. And Luke Brown knew he wouldn't be. 
one of them is going home. The 4-5 in the A-Sun, Stetson and Lipscomb. Bison's by two as we get back underway to start the second half. 20 minutes, 20 minutes. Are the Hatters, are you satisfied with your season? And the Bison, do you want to continue to win? Asana Sajula with the left-hand hook, no good. The tip-up by the Hatters falls in. Yeah, take your pick, Weza Panzo or Josh Smith, but Asajula will get the credit for that bucket. Not only that, an offensive rebound. Nice work if you can get it. It's been that kind of night for Lipscomb. It was that night Friday as well. Things just kind of bouncing their way. Stefan Swenson for three. How about that? No other hatter besides Blackman had made a three in the first half. Swenson gets one on the first possession. Boyd on the response. Offensive yeah. foul. And the hatters came out in a zone defense, but they left Boyd wide open. And Boyd, instead of taking the shot, Made a pump fake, decided to take it to the basket here, but you had Josh Smith in perfect position. Second foul on Boyd as Smith draws the charge. And the Hatters suddenly have it with a chance to take the lead. Tough to take the ball to the basket 25 feet out in college basketball. You got to make those one, two hard dribbles and put it up. Blackman against Pruitt shakes him off, drives, he'll go to the line. the first on Pruitt and they have not been able to stop or even slow down Jalen Blackman tonight and Blackman with the behind the back dribble sometimes it's not just for show but it's by necessity he ties it up at 37 the first time the Hatters have been level since 2-2 in the first 30 seconds of the game very good free throw shooter is Blackman and he's showing you why he's leading the A-Sun and free throw shooting percentage, but the use of the bounce, the dribble, to get himself free. Now they've got themselves the lead. Asajula backing down Smith with the right. That one rolls out as well. Smith saves the board. Asajula got it where he wanted to, but he has no lift for that shot. Swenson trying to get going quickly. Lipscomb gets back on defense. Into Smith. Bring Great out. pass. And Smith throws it down. What a ball by Swenson into Smith. And that's why you miss Mr. Swenson, who's 61st in the country in assists and leads the A son in assists. Agnasevic. He's fouled. That's no nope. step, step out down. Out. It looked like they were calling Could a have foul. Been a foul. Could have very well been a foul, Evan. And I think that Reza would have been Panzo, three on Wesley. Yes, he dodged the bullet as we take a look at it here. The deep inside pass, but really nowhere for Agnostic to go when he received it. He received it underneath the basket. A good angle on the replay there. There really wasn't a whole lot of contact. Agnostic lost his footing. Now Swenson to Smith with momentum, lost his dribble, got it back. Blackman streaking, floater short. McGinnis on the run out. McGinnis all the way. Knocked down by Swenson, headed to the corner for Boyd. And Swenson, you can tell he's getting his legs under him, having missed two games, hit that big three a couple of series ago, and defensively, he's there. Timing is just coming back. When you miss playing two basketball games, it just doesn't happen right away. Smith with a deflection, stays with Lipscomb. So working your way back into a basketball game, but it helped handling the basketball, being a point guard and running the team. You can do it at your pace. Plenty of time for the Bison, 18 seconds. Throw it. Finds Agnosovic. Into a Sajula. Back in, Asajula missed another hook. And he's just missing a lot of gimmies because he no lift. He's kind of just shot putting it up there. A couple of years ago, he would. Swenson leans in, doesn't get it to go, and no foul. Could have been a charge, so the officials let it play on. McGinnis, no good from three. He still has not scored in this building Friday night or tonight, along with Benham. They're two big gunners. Swenson finds himself all alone to Panzo in the corner. Way short. 
But Wesley's been just way off yeah. these last two games. I thought Swinson should have converted that you know, point blank range at the rim. Sometimes you just you got to forget about the throwing out for the three. So Lipscomb's gotten a couple of stops, but they haven't scored in three minutes. No basket. So Ignacevic was fouled by Panzo, so there he picks up his third. And, and this, is what the makes, this is what makes J.O. so tough, Ignacevic. He can put basketball on the floor, and as I said, he's locked than you think he is, and he's stronger than you think he is. Unorthodox player, conventional results. Sam Peek checks in for Panzo with the foul trouble. Inbound goes to Boyd, and Swenson shoved him out of bounds. So Swenson picks up his second foul. And the correct call. Matt Schneer, seven of the first half, checks in for Lipscomb. Agnasevic for three. Bounces off twice. Wow. And the rebound is dropped by Peak. And I think Arnazovic shot a dud up there. <laughs> it just died on the, the back of the rim. And you a can new basketball, sometimes it bounces. Yeah, sometimes take a look it at it there. Not. It just, whoa, it just like a shot put. And you can shoot in the gym all day long and not be able to do that. There's McGinnis's first two. And McGinnis, and that's what's scary about this team. McGinnis, Trey Benham, Goose Eggs for Friday and up until tonight, up until that basket. Yeah, those two give you 14 points a night between the two of them. And both of them over 200 threes between them. Swenson not even close with a step back three. That didn't look comfortable the whole way. Yeah, thought that may have been tipped. Anything can happen. Those teams in the play-in are at such a disadvantage playing an away game on a back-to-back. -back. And yet, Queens giving Kennesaw State all they can handle. And the Hatters come out in a 1-2-2, two, two, three-quarter court press, and now in a zone defense. Just a little different look, and I like this. But this is such a good passing basketball team. Boyd but missed it did, the open three. It did, Evan, exactly what you wanted it to do. Quick shot, change the pace. Oh, you could say that Boyd missed the wide open three yeah. as well. It's a guy who will normally knock that down nearly 40% on the season trying to duplicate a performance you had friday night it's tough there goes josh smith yeah he has the advantage here puts it up against schner gets yep. the roll just too strong too big too strong he's doing to snare what asadula does to him <laughs> <laughs> the food chain of centers in this game <laughs> Schneer is really not a center at all. Agnosevic got pulled out there. Hatters by three. Lipscomb has found baskets hard to come by in the second half. Schneer with all kinds of space. Peak with the block. Terrific recovery by Sam Peak. Yeah, Peak just didn't give up on the play, and Schneer, as is a lot of the Bisons, finding themselves so far up under the basket and tried to make a difficult shot. And when you reach it out there like that, got to block it. Off the foot of Josh Smith here off the inbound. Lipscomb will keep it with two seconds on the shot clock. Take your pick there. I mean, that could have been off of Agnosovich's foot as well. Let's see if they can draw something up for 41 gear with the shot clock down. He's got it. Turnaround jumper. No good. Not a half bad look for two seconds left. And Blackman is rebounding the basketball at a high clip tonight as well. Brown wide open for three. Luke yes. Brown knocks it down. He's got eight. Batters with their largest lead of the game. They're up 12 to 4 since halftime. Pruitt on the other end draws the foul. That'll be on peak his first. And Will Pruitt just taking control of this as you see a wide open cool hand loop knocking it down <laughs> and then on the back will pruitt just says hey let me just take this basketball to the basket let me see if i can catch the headers not set up defensively which he did and he's going to the line now back to brown real quick panzo is first in the country in three-point shooting if brown qualified he'd be third 
And the qualification, by the way, is absolutely outrageous. You have to make two and a half a game to qualify. Are you kidding me? So you got to take probably at least six or seven threes per game attempts. just to qualify exactly. for a exactly. three-point percentage. That is madness. Which which creeds, which gives more credence that Wes Panzo is doing what he's doing yep. all season long for the Hatters. Pruitt one out of two at the free throw line. Lipscomb is only seven of 11 on free throws tonight. Hatters in control since the break. Swenson, that's a three. In and out. A tough shot there. I think you could get something better if you're the Hatters. But you talk about that missed free throw, and this is both of these are very good free throw shooting teams. Schnur drives. Pruitt puts it in. A nice dish off by Schneer and Pruitt now. He's 6'3", 195. He's solid. And we've seen him score inside the paint quite a bit. Started all 64 games he's played over the last two years. A veteran runs this team. Swenson trapped. Gets it out. Yeah, plenty of time. Plenty of time. Peak on the drive. Blocked by Schneer. Masangelo back in. Grabs the board. Pruitt. Now you have Clark in, which you know he wants to take it to the basket. McGinnis drives his way in and gets the foul. And McGinnis, the shot is not working from the outside. Let me take the ball to the basket, which all shooters, if you're struggling, there is a pick, and there is the taking it to the basket by McGinnis. A.J. McGinnis says, I'm not going goose egg this game. Six four sophomore from Huntsville, Alabama, James Clemens High School. He's a sophomore, but he's four years out of high school. He did a prep year. I wasn't going to say yeah, that. Then he, year at Greensboro, year at Cincinnati last year. He missed some time yeah. with an ankle injury and an illness. He barely played, and this year he's found a home at his fourth stop out of high school with Lipscomb. Yeah, went out to Link Year Prep, which is out in Branson, Missouri. Blackman gets the foul. The places and the cities that round basketball will take you, Evan. As you take a look at Blackman. A lot of fun stuff to his, do in Branson. It, <laughs> showing his versatility there as Blackman getting fouled. Taking the ball to the basket. Everybody wants to play that jump shot. I can put it on the floor. Blackman four out of four at the line tonight. And he's just been solid all season long for the Hatters. And he and Luke Brown and started out scoring a lot of the points, but and Luke getting that injury for the Hatters, but he has remained a constant. 22 tonight for the ace on newcomer of the year, Jalen Blackman. And this that's the 12th time that he scored 20 or more points, so that tells you something about that young man's ability. Top 20 all time. Indiana high school basketball history in points. Third foul on Stefan Swenson here away from the play. That is That's a, a big, big call. That is a huge foul. 44 left. Yes, not even at the halfway point. He's going to have to come out. So the Hatters down their point guard probably for a significant chunk of time here. Yeah, we take a look at it there. And just wrestling with Will. And we've seen worse than that tonight. <laughs> Sajula dumps for Schneer. McGinnis open for three. In and out. Rebound peak. Dangerous shooter, McGinnis. He's put up the most threes along with Trey Benham for the Bison. Capable score. There's the skip pass. Lipscomb had it covered. Shot clock winding down. Jawara give and go with Brown. Corner, Oglesby. He's got to put one up. Leans back. No good. And didn't even get the rim. It's a shot clock violation. Great defensive possession from Lipscomb. It was. Everybody moving on a string. Help defense. And good on the ball defense. Oglesby has been quiet for the Hatters. Most of the time he comes into the basketball game, he's giving his team a plus. Clark on the drive for Lipscomb. Way short and does not have the touch that he had on Friday. 
when he had 17 points. Another Blackman, rebound. transition three, no good. Jawara, the offensive board, goes up with the hook and scores. And actually lost it on the way up, but credit Jawara, moving without the basketball. Good offensive rebound, and you're going to keep moving. Benham wide open for three. He can't buy one. Schneer with the offensive rebound. Through it. That's a triple. That's no good. Blackman lost the handle, but it rolls fortuitously to Brown. And that's probably seven, eight rebounds for Blackman. Ordinarily, doesn't rebound the basketball well. Only, like, not a lot of rebounds per game. Two per game. Two per about. game, but now he has close to eight, if not eight. In and out with a triple. He has not made a field goal in the second half. Does have the four free throws. Here's Benham again. Yeah. It was a bound yeah. to go down at oh, some yeah. point for Trey Benham. And that's that's what's dangerous about this basketball team. And I mentioned it in the top of the telecast. Benham and McGinnis, they didn't score. And they still won the game. So these guys can give you something from the outside. And they're not bashful <laughs> about putting it up either. Benham shoots 37% out there. Two-point hatter lead. Here's Peak. You can see they're struggling without Swenson to find that good look. Brown to Oglesby. Deep triple. That's no good. And over the backboard. Take us to a timeout. The three fouls on Stefan Swenson. Can you say Hoosiers? <laughs> they're both, both from Indiana. Indiana. Those young men can shoot the basketball. Cool hand Luke and Brown is, uh, yeah, Brown is the number four scorer in Indiana high school basketball history, and wow. Blackman is number 18. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. They were rivals in AAU ball, now teammates, all the way in Florida in college. Agnosevic for three. He's got it, and Lipscomb takes the lead. Well, don't forget about Jacob Agnosevic, not too far from Indiana, up in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. <laughs> And that was because of Clark able to penetrate. And everybody knows about his one-on-one -on -one ability. And he made the right pass. Stefan Swenson still on the bench for Stetson. Blackman all the way gets fouled. Jawara's putback won't count. The foul is on Schneer, his first. And Blackman is showing Clark that, hey, I can take the ball to the basket as well. And there's the mixed double team there with Agnosovic a little late. And when Blackman turns the corner there, he knew he had to take it all away and take the contact. Blackman getting his points in the second half the hard way. That three from Agnosovic, just the second that Lipscomb has made since halftime. Neither offense has been clicking on all cylinders. It's been that kind of game because of defense. Both teams have extended the defense at time. How does it mix it up a bit? And you get that in conference tournaments, right, where the intensity ratchets up. Here goes Agnosevic. Missed the finish. Did all that hard work and left it short. Now Blackman on the run against Clark. Blocked. Good defense by Clark. Quincy Clark with the block in the open floor. Now Darian Boyd driving on Oglesby. Up strong. It's good. And he could have very well had a three-point play there. A lot of contact. The officials are letting it, letting both teams play. But much too much hand checking going on there. And Donnie Jones is ready to get Swenson and Panzo both with three fouls back in the game. Aggressive from Donnie Jones, but probably needed. Oh, Brown, what beautiful, a move. Beautiful. He puts it in. I mean, he put on the brakes. And let the defender go by behind the back dribble. Cool hand Luke. Boy with the answer. In and out. Clark chases down the rebound. Two Bisons running that down. They've had the decided edge on the offensive rebound. Trey Benham. That's no good. Brown with the board. Don't have the numbers. And Luke Brown recognizing that slows it up. Wants the screen from Josh Smith. Pick and roll well defended. And the Hatters just see if they can get a little more ball movement. It's been a lot of two-man game because that's the personnel that you have in. Blackman. Step back, triple over Agnosevic. Got to get it up. Here goes Smith. And 
the no shot basket. Clock. The yeah. shot clock reset inadvertently. And we'll stick around. And it's, it's, it's time. It's time for a catch and shoot. Swenson off the back of Agnasovic, but he missed it. It's a held ball. It'll stay with the Hatters as Smith went in to get the basketball. Swenson <laughs> threw it off Ignasevic, yes. but missed the shot. And he was too wide open. And a lefty on the left side of the basket. Oh, if that had gone in, this place would have exploded. Hatters do have more time to work with now, though. You get that 20 seconds on the clock. And a foul on Lipscomb away from the play. That's on Ignacevic, his first. And now the screws are being a little tightened. And the officials are starting to call a little more. It's been very physical inside, looking at Josh Smith and look at the grabbing of the shirt by Ignacevic. Brown in the corner, driving, throws up a floater, gets it to go. And this is the basketball play for a grown man, a GAM. <laughs> The grown A man tonight, so you can't look for the officials to bail you out. Snare way too much space. He's got nine. And a good look to find him. The Hatters got hung up. And the switch there. Brown runs a cut. Now he'll get it. Hatters playing their deliberate pace. They seem to have taken over the pace of the game here goes brown no foul rebound by clark schnair Bison. Bison open for three it. knocks it down and that's because of clark pushing the pace and of course they were five on four with luke brown on his back seat there he got felt like he got fouled but he didn't get into that play lips come back into the lead and the hatters have their closing group out there already Smith Nowhere to go And it's going to be on Boyd They're yep. coming down to double up and Josh Smith and Agnosovich had good position No need to foul there As we take a look at Josh Dribbling, Smith is dribbling And, and yes, there's Boyd coming in with the foul It's That's not a, going to be a, a shot attempt. Third foul on Darian Boyd That does put Stetson in the bonus here That was the sixth foul on Lipscomb so they'll have free throws the next time. Here goes Blackman, driving on Clark. Just lost his dribble there. And then Panzo, who has been all over the place tonight, can't find Blackman, and the Hatters turn it over. The Hatters, one of the best ball clubs in the A-Sun with assist-to-turnover ratio. And they've been turning it over tonight, but you have to credit the Bison for their sticky defense. Here goes Clark again. Kicks to an open Boyd in the corner. Lipscomb. And Boyd has been playing very good basketball as of late. And their 19 wins, he's averaging 12 points a game. And their losses, he only averages eight. Timeout, Stetson. As Lipscomb. They would get Eastern Kentucky another home game as well. If Queens is able to pull that off. They would host the winner of this game in that scenario. Tough place to play, Richmond, Kentucky. Hatters down five. Safan Swenson, no good, and a foul on the rebound. Weza Panzo working on the offensive glass. And that may be the Hatters do not have any offensive rebounds tonight. They have the one by Jawara. Yes, yes. The That's only it. one. You're, you're right. So this is a one and one here, by the way, for Panzo. As well, three, picks up his three offensive third foul. Rebounds. Yeah, only three offensive rebounds. But again, if you're struggling shooting the basketball, and Wesley has, hasn't gotten those opportunities, but he's doing other things, and that's what you have to do as a complete basketball player. He missed the second. First missed free throw from Stetson tonight. They were 10 out of 10. Clark, it's been a game changer in this series. He scores again. His ability to get to the basket. And he's a strong two guard. Lenny Acuff can't take him out of the game. He let him close <laughs> on Friday night. He's doing it yeah. again. 
six-point Lipscomb lead, their largest of the second half. Swenson double teamed to Smith in the high post. Swenson gets it back. Blackman for three. Heck of a time to get your first field goal of the second half. Jalen Blackman with 27 for the game. And Swenson gave up several looks to get him that open shot. Here's Boyd on the drive. Puts it in. 16 for Darian Boyd. Strong take by a strong player. Boyd had 20 on Friday, and he's continuing that play tonight. Brown sends Boyd flying. Hits the three. The Hatters won't go away. And it's Blackman and Brown, the spark plugs. Heat them up, let them score. Two-point game. Here goes Clark. He scores another one. They cannot keep him out of the paint. <laughs> Every time the Hatters hit a big bucket, Lipscomb has an answer. Swenson working on Pruitt, has a step, missed the shot. He's missed a ton around the basket tonight. Rebound trickles out, it bounces to Agnasovic. They've got a break here. Agnasovic scores around Smith. Gotta get a timeout if you're the Hatters. And it's just Bison basketball at its best. There it is. That's it won't go away, but let's bunch of Bison because Osagula, you don't have that speed with him in the basketball game. You know, now you have a, a smaller team, a faster team, and the Hatters just have no answer for Clark. They got a foul on Clark, and that'll put Blackman at the line for a one and one. That's a gift for Stetson. Yeah, and that's something you didn't want if you're the Bison coming out of this timeout. Eighth team foul on Lipscomb. The whistles went the Bison's way 8-5 to five in the first half. It's 8-5 to five in the inverse here in the second. And Blackman, who is 8 for 8 the free throw line tonight, will shoot two more. And a six-point game, now a five-point game as we take a look at it there. He got him with the reach to grab right when he came across the lane on the post up. But we've seen worse. We've seen <laughs> more tonight. Blackman more ties his career high at 29. 10 out of 10 on the free throw shooting. It's a four point game. Now the question is can Stetson stop Quincy Clark from wreaking havoc? And the Hatters are in a zone defense. This is a very good shooting basketball. And this is what Clark does not do well to shoot the basketball. They've got Boyd and Schneer and Pruitt. Pruitt into the paint, scores it. Just muscled his way in. Hatters just can't buy a stop. And that's what all that summer workout, when you're in the gym and you're lifting, that's what it gets you right there. Blackman for three. No good. That feels like a big one. And Lipscomb is going to slow it down a little bit. Know the time and score. Boy, he just pulls up. He was too open. And Lipscomb has scored on six consecutive possessions to take a commanding lead. And Boyd has been the catalyst of a lot of it, along with Clark. Boyd has a team high 19. And right now, Jalen Blackman's career night could be for naught. Turnover, Stetson. Uncharacteristic of the Hatters. But you have to give the credit to the Bison with the tough defense. And the Hatters have not answered the bell when the, in regards to the physicality. A lot of holding, a lot of pushing, and they've continued to play their game, the Bison, and the Hatters, it has bothered them. Stetson desperate for a stop. Jawara comes in for defense. Agnosevic drives by him. Little floater, it's good! 20 for Agnosevic, they cannot miss! Swenson, no good. Agnasovic, the rebound. And the eyes in Nashville starting to turn to Thursday night. Under two minutes. Foul by Blackman. And he is the guy you want to foul. Well, they had one to give, so yeah. they'll go for the steal here on the inbound. Wow. It took nearly three hours of basketball to separate these two teams this year. But Lipscomb... 
pulling away late on the road. And, and for 36 minutes, the Hatters controlled that inside the paint, them getting inside the paint. But these last four or five minutes, it has been the Achilles heel. Boyd with a loose dribble. Swenson couldn't find the basketball. Lipscomb doing the right thing to run the clock, and then Clark gets fouled by Brown. And Clark is probably the 56% free throw shooter, so you're playing your percentages here. But time is on the side of the Bison and not for the Hatters, as the Hatters see themselves down 11. It is still airtight in Kennesaw, by the way, a 52-52 game. And, of course, a 56% free throw shooter will step right up and make them. <laughs> Quincy Clark loves to play in this gym. Nine assists tonight to go along with six points. That makes it two for three from the free throw line. And he makes both. Three for four. That is eight straight possessions that have ended with Lipscomb scoring. And when you don't come away with a stop, that is difficult. Defense has been the Achilles heel of this Stetson team all season. Looks like it's going to cost them tonight. Agnosovic lays it in. And you can book your tickets now. It's just a question of where you're going. That is if correct. you're a Lipscomb fan, are you going to Kennesaw, Georgia? Or are you going to Richmond, Kentucky? And the Hatters, are, you're looking at turnovers. I mean, they've turned the basketball over, but it's been because of the Bison play. A seven, eight turnovers. This basketball game, as we take a look at it here, and the hustle plays, and just Clark, just, hey, give me that, and a nice dish to Agnostovich running the lane, converting. And just a rough way for Stetson's season to come to an end, where they were enjoying what will probably go down as the best year that they have had in about 35 years, but ultimately undone by a Lipscomb team that, let's be honest, is probably better than a five seed in this league. If they end up going to Eastern Kentucky, I don't think it would surprise anybody if they won that game, especially the way they're playing right now. Well, Blackman has done his job for yeah, the Yeah, it'll be cold comfort for him, but he's got almost half their points. His yeah. first 30-point game as a college player. And right now, time is of the essence, so you just have to foul. And this is a very good free throw shooter, but you don't have much choice. You want to stop the clock if you're the Hatters. And if you're the Bison, you just want to convert free throws. It's a one and one for Pruitt, who shoots 81% at the line. He's the pride of Mount Juliet High School, the Golden Bears. Had a brother there, was a football player, went to Austin P. Will is. Got that thick build, but. On his home on the basketball court. Overplayed volleyball at Tennessee Tech, and I'm looking at one of the ASUN representatives, Mr. Jerome Rogers, who played at Tennessee Tech to my right. So about uh, just an athletic family. Blackman with two more. But the clock is just not on the side of the Hatters right now. Blackman going for the steal. Pruitt crosses half court. And Stetson will call off the dogs. Not necessarily all done for them. They could certainly get an invitation to a postseason tournament. They did go to the CBI a couple of years ago. Yeah, with, with a record at 17 and, and 12, now maybe 17 and 13. And some quality wins. Yeah, of course, the Florida State at South Florida. Won a couple of big A-Sun games. And the Mac challenge the Ma -a 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 <laughs> challenge the Metro Athletic Conference where they had a win over across the pond yeah they beat Ryder Sam Peak shooting a couple of free throws here at the end but you look at the Bison I mean they've had wins against Belmont their rival there in Nashville UT Chattanooga Navy and, and Louisville. Louisville even if it's a down team but you go to Rupp I mean you go to um, Louisville, Kentucky there and beat that team even though they're down a little this year. That's still a very good win against a power five school.
Darian Boyd will shoot a pair. He can get to 20 points if he makes one of these. And Boyd is just one of those players, those lefties, they're just strong two guard who can do multiple things on the floor for you. 41 points in the last two nights here in the land. Safe to say he likes this place. Blackman throwing up a desperation heave, but Lipscomb will be able to run it out. They are moving on to the A-Sun semifinals. An emphatic 83 to 70 win. They could not miss down the stretch. 21 for Boyd, 22 for Ognasevic. And Lenny A. Cuffs Bisons will be heading either to Richmond or Kennesaw, depending on that Queens KSU result. The Stetson Hatters see their season an historic, terrific 2023 campaign for Stetson and in Hartford.